Okay, we're back on assembly eight motor. <clears throat> I pushed the bearings in here, so I got to deal with them now. So, so the problem we have with this is, is that the new main bearings in here are tight, just like the old main bearings were, because of the way they're made. <clears throat> so you got to deal with that now. So let's get this apart. bolts in here holding this together. Again, the sharp edges. I gotta do something about that. Slice my finger open on one of them the other day. There's some sharp edges right here in the corners. I did not deburr. I was trying to figure out what's cutting me, and I figured out what it is. It's right here. It looks like a damn knife right there. That one and that one. You gotta deburr those. Okay. Um, yeah, wonderful. So basically what we got here is uh, I got the camera. <clears throat> the twin cam bearings. So I pulled out the old bearings, they're all full of blown up motor crap and they were tighter than hell. So these races in here are supposed to be a loose fit and they're not, they're tight. So, so they're loose right there, but then you go in a little deeper, they get tight. But they're not really loose, they're just zero clearance. So they kind of go in, but really and right here it gets tight, right there it gets tight. You push it in deeper, it gets tighter. So these things are too big in diameter. <clears throat> so this one's even tighter. Hear it coming out? That's tight. So that's supposed to be a nice loose fit. <clears throat> now on a street bike, you can kind of get away with this crap a little bit, but basically tight bearings do not live very long. They're not happy. These are really big bearings, so they can take a lot of abuse. So they can kind of tolerate this crap a little bit, but not when you're racing it. So you got a big motor like this, you got to have room in here for flux. You want these things to be nice and loose. So <clears throat> the problem is these things are oversized diameter for what the bearings should be right now. And I was waiting for the customer to get back to me on how these goes on the crank. He says he just slip on the crank. They're not tight. If, they, if they're a push on the crank, then that means they expand even bigger and get even tighter. So, basically on a Harley, you're going to want <clears throat> something around 1,000 to 1,000 and a half clearance on these things, minimum, to really leave a little bit of float in the crank. And on a race motor, you basically want to like double your numbers, at least to 50% more, at least a couple thousand clearance. Three would be good too. That gives you plenty of room for the crank to kind of move around and flex because it's going to flex at a high RPM. If you're trying to retain the crank with the bearings, it's just going to eat up the bearings, soaks up a lot of horsepower because it causes a lot of binding and it slows you down. Let the thing flop around in there, it's going to flop anyway. It's a weak crank, let it flop. Don't try to keep it from flopping, just keep it contained. Keep it inside the flywheels, inside the case where they belong, but let it flex. And then you'll be fine. On my race bike, I'll run these things like 10,000 clearance on them because I run an 8,000 RPM sustained. And you're going to have a lot of flex of that RPM. This big motor up here, I don't know he's going to turn it. It's all about the head flow. If it makes power above 6,000, great. Probably not. But my motors don't run under 6,000, so i got to have clearance. So I'm going to have to do something about opening these up. <clears throat> so right now, this should be zero on your micrometer when you measure it. And you can see right now we're one and a half up. So it's one and a half too tight already. This one over here, you go measure this one. And this one's about one and three quarter up. You look at the line right there. And that's even tighter. So you put this over there, it really gets tight. You put that over here, it gets loose. But, but basically, they're too tight, damn tight. <clears throat> so how are we going to fix that problem? These are hardened a little bit. So you can't like just file on them. Plus you don't want to, you want a smooth surface here. 
So what you got to do is you're going to have to hone these on the external hone. And if they're tight on the inside, you hone them on the internal hone. Internal hones are easy to do. External hones are not as easy. So we're going to have to figure out how we're going to do that. <coughs> Luckily, I know how to do that. So that's going to require a little bit of work. So we go over to the working department. <coughs> Down here. Let's keep the tripod out of the way. Like okay, so we got our tools right here that we need. Mike and our two races we're gonna cut down. And a hammer we're gonna need. Okay, so the, in order to hold this race and the lathe, because my chuck jaws won't let me hold it, because they're too, too big, we have to have an expanding mandrel. So we go down here, we find the expanding mandrel. These are expanding mandrels down here. So these are small ones right here. I'll show you how things are made. So basically it's a tapered, with a tapered expanding mandrel piece here in the middle, collar. You know, I call that a collet or just a segment piece, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, you, you beat that up the taper, it expands, it locks up the part, and it keeps it pretty well on center. These are pretty precision made. So they're not real cheap. They're made really good. <clears throat> so basically you can probably hold a foul tolerance pretty easy by using this stuff. So there's two different ones here. You got the one that goes up to that big, and we got the big one. And it's the same ID, just a bigger OD. So you have to figure out which one we're gonna use, because I don't know yet. So let's figure that out right now. Years ago I bought all these different ones, so I make sure I got all the sizing. Because I always had a problem that they didn't have the right size to do what I needed. Then you find out you got to get this piece, or I have this one and have this one, whatever the problem was. <clears throat> First off, you take the big one. If it goes on there like that, that's the right one. This one here, go on there, obviously it's a little loose. Now you can span that thing all the way up to there, and that's as big as you can go. That ain't enough. So we got to take that off, swap it out with the other one. So that just means you got to take it off over this side or you try to break it by going off this side. So, got to figure out how you're going to do that. So we're going to try to get it over this end over here. Probably need a little pick or a little screwdriver to do that, which I don't have right this second. But we're going to have to get one. So we'll get a little small screwdriver. <coughs> Okay. Well, if you put some kind of piece of metal in here, roll around a little bit, and you can slide it straight out. But it's got to be thicker than tin foil. So basically, I'm going to put some pressure on here with my thumb, and kind of expand it a little bit, kind of work it over. It's not working very well. It's not cooperating. I don't like expand it this way because you can overexpand them. So, let's see, how are we going to do this? I'm going to go do it with my vise, I think. Let me see, we can use the, oh, we can use the lathe. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and put on a lathe, push on pressure, and just try to pop it off this way. Need some way to put some pressure on that. Now I can actually put pressure on the center right here and put actually real pressure on it too if I want to. We'll try to lower that one first. much work. Go the easy way over the back side down here. I don't really like doing it that way but there it's off. 
you keep doing that it gets this expanded real big and then it's loose down here you see it's already getting pretty big it should be closed up like that but that's probably been done more than once already <clears throat> and I'm not sure how that's gonna work because that is not the right size for that mandrel not when it goes off the end like that that ain't gonna help me so this is not the right one so that's another problem looks like great so I'm gonna find some more different parts I thought these were pre-made in kits already but obviously we got some issues let's go find some different ones we know this one's too small My phone ringing. All right. Got some bigger ones. We're back.